Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming and on this video tutorial, I'm gonna show you uh, several projects that I made last year for my house that I'm getting ready to put back out into my family room using some of my favorite things and we're gonna make something. So, as you're hopping on, say hi, let me know where you're watching from, feel free to sprinkle, you know, all that usual stuff. Okay, so, so what are some of my favorite things? Well, if you've watched DIY Dreaming for any amount of time, then you know that one of my absolute most favorite things are vintage Mother of Pearl buttons. So we'll be using some of those, and I have some of those in these projects behind me. Um, I love using canvas duck fabric. And I was at my Walmart that has a grocery store, today, this morning, getting groceries, because I'm making something really yummy for dinner. And I went through the craft department real quick, and they had canvas duck fabric back on the shelf in the fabric section. And so I have them cut three yards, and we'll be using this. It's just creamy colored, uh, it's pretty thick and heavy canvas duck. I don't wash it, okay? And then, I haven't worked with this in a while, and I think I was pretty close to being out, so I picked this up. And it is, and you guys, I apologize right from the very start, my Facebook page is not flipping. I can't flip it so that it's not backwards. I'm sorry, it's something weird with Facebook, some little glitch. Anyways, this is cotton batting, uh, quilt batting, sorry. Needled cotton batting. It's warm and natural brand. And this was a big container. It was, I don't know, 12 or $13, but I'll be able to do a ton with it. And we're gonna use some of those things. And we're gonna use some of this nautical rope from Dollar Tree, $1. Or maybe it's $125 if, if your store is switched to $125 or 150 we're going to be using some different lace and ribbiting kind of things too. So I have a disaster going on here and I'm not sure where to start. So I think I'll start with this. This was a banner. Can you guys see that? I'm going to take it down and bring it up close. It was a banner that I made last summer. Um, I love having banners on my fireplace, and I think I just recently replayed this video. It's everything that I've just talked about, cotton batting that we use to make these loopy and stacked flowers. There's vintage mother of pearl buttons, there's lace, and it's Dollar Tree rope. Um, so this is flowers, and I will put this um, up in my family room after Valentine's Day is over. But I wanted to make a banner that is this feel, these colors, uh, with a heart and love theme for Valentine's Day. So that's what we'll be making, but this is what I wanted to show you. Number one, hang it back up. Okay, and number two, I just got all my pillows out. And um, these are the pillows that are gonna go on my sofa. This one says, be still and know that I am God. It's the lumbar pillow from Magnolia Design Company. And I made this last year. I think I did a Christ and Crafting on it. It's a great lumbar pillow. So it's going out. And then I made these two pillows last year as well. And they're getting ready to go back on my sofa. And um, this one is a wreath that I made with um, gold and silver ink. And then the vintage Mother of Pearl buttons are just hot glued on here. And it's perfectly fine. It's comfy even. And then this is another one that I made last year. That's gonna go back on my sofa. And I made this one. Use, and don't worry, I'm good. we're gonna actually do a project. I just wanted to show you what the theme is and uh, what this project we're making is gonna go with. Okay, so 
this I used this awesome stencil from Magnolia DIY that's called Retro Flower Pattern in um, gold. And then I used this um, sunflower looking flower stencil in silver ink. And then it has a whole bunch of mother pearl buttons on it. And it might look kind of busy here, but I'll get pictures of everything on the sofa with the, um, the banner that we're going to make uh, this afternoon. And you'll see how pretty all of it is together. So that is what we have going on. What do you guys think? Um, I don't know if you're like me, but I love to make stuff for my own house. Um, I also love to, to make stuff that I'm going to give away, but, but I really love to make things, um, and I love to swap out the pillows on my sofa frequently. I love to change the banners frequently. I love to do candle garters, which I'll do next, and swap those out. So um, there's so much that you can do. Um, thank you to whoever sent stars. That's awesome. Okay, so we are going to be making a banner. And we're going to use this again as our thing that we're putting it on. And what I want to tell you about this rope to start out with is that if you cut it, it will completely unravel. So if you end up cutting it, be sure to put some tape. You can see a little better on this one. Tape on it before you cut it so that you don't have an unraveled mess. Otherwise, this stuff is great. Um, I always grab it whenever I'm at Dollar Tree and they have it in stock. So we'll be using that. And um, I've started, I did one half of it. I'm gonna show you that real quick and then we'll do the other half and then we'll put the whole thing together. Okay, so one of my little banner pieces looks like this. This is this new, um, stencil that says live love laugh okay and you guys um i was completely out of my magnolia glittering gold ink so i said huh i wonder if the mango mojito ink that i have would look good and it's so similar and it works great so this is this and we'll do it we'll do the little flag thing for the other side um, oh okay and let me give you the dimensions of this because I know somebody's gonna ask my little banner flags are about eight and a half inches long and about six inches wide and they're torn you know how you do that and then you pull the strings to fray them so that's what the, the sides and the bottom look like. And then this top part will be folded over. Okay? Uh, so what did I say? Eight and a half by six, roughly. And there's seven pieces. When you're making banners, you always want to do an odd number. So either three flags, five flags, seven flags, or nine flags. And each one of these little pieces on a banner is called a flag. Okay, so that's going to be the outside. Flip it around so that you can sort of see. And then next to that is going to be this piece, which we're going to do. And I made these banner pieces stuffed. So they just have a little dimension. Okay, so I'll show you how we're going to do that. That says love, love, love on it. It'll go next to this. And then next to that will be this one that has a heart cut out of fabric that I made with the love pattern stencil. And then it has some of this adorable little tool as a bow. And then the center one, we're not gonna make this one again. This was hard, <laughs> and I'll tell you about it, is this. Okay, this is quilt batting with some buttons on it and it's stuffed. And then while I was at Walmart this morning, <clears throat> I picked up a yard of this. It's like ballerina tutu stuff. And it was 97 cents a yard. So I got a yard of this, and I also got a yard of this. 
which just is a little bit finer. This is what I cut for the bow for this one. And this uh, coarser one is what I put around the edge of my heart made out of quilt batting. I hope you guys aren't overwhelmed, but I'll get pictures and um, yeah, it's gonna be awesome. So this is what it will basically be looking like on one side. Uh, did I, wait, let me think, what did I decide? Maybe I was going to put these, I can't remember what order I had decided. Possibly I was gonna do it like this. I don't know, we'll figure that out. Okay, so I have my other pieces all ready to go and let's do this stencil first. This is a new adorable little five by seven stencil. It's like $8.99 or something. It's really a good deal. And it's got this pretty like wreath kind of thing around it. And I love the font. I marked the back of it with the Sharpie. And I'm not going to fuzz it, but I could if I wanted to on my jeans or something. But it's going on fabric, so there's really no point to fuzz it before you put it on fabric with fabric. Okay, if you've not ever worked with these um, adhesive stencils from MagnoliaDIY.com, they're awesome. They're reusable. I will, I'm just looking to see, do I have it roughly the same placement? I think I do. Um, I will put this away after Valentine's Day and I'll bring it back out next year and the year after and the year after and I'll use it over and over and over. So this is the Mango Mojito ink and I'm just going to put a couple of blobs on there. That might be too much. I don't know. We'll see. And then I'm using a squeegee and we're just going to basically push the ink through the holes on the stencil and I'm going to resist the temptation or the urge that I always have to keep going over and over and over it because when I do that that's usually when I make a mistake or end up going outside of the boundaries of the stencil or I um, accidentally push too much of the medium underneath the stencil and you get a messy look. So we're going to just get it covered, take the excess globs off, and then stop. Just a little bit more. So these projects today, I mean, I don't know what your style is, but they are 9,000% my style the kind of colors, um, textures, and things that I love for my house. But if these are not your colors or your style, you could still, let me throw this over here, do a project like this. You could just choose different colors, different colors of ribbon, of tool, of ink, of fabric. And there we go, live, love, laugh, super easy. Okay, and I just threw that in a little tub of water so it can be um, dry. Right there. Okay, so that was one. The next one that we're gonna make has this. And um, okay, so what I did to get my hearts, I always use whatever I have. And this was a little wooden heart that came from Dollar Tree. And so I traced it on a piece of computer paper and put it in half. And this is what I used to cut out my quilt batting pieces. So the hearts are all exactly the same. You can freehand this or you can find a pattern for a heart. Some people like their hearts to be wide and, and soft. Sometimes some people like them to be really long and pointy with a deep V. It's just whatever you like, but I basically just cut out my piece of quilt batting 
with that. And what we're making is this. Okay, so this is this new ribbon that I just purchased at Walmart today. It was a little um, rich for me. It was like $5.50 or something. But you guys, it is beautiful lace. And on this project, I covered up the little ribbon that's threaded through the center of it. But I know I'll use it with that ribbon for a lot of other projects. So it was a, it was a splurge to spend $5 on ribbon or lace for me. But totally worth it. Okay, I need to close this up. Okay, so I just put my piece of lace across my heart sort of at an angle. And I want to do it the opposite way on this side. Okay, and I'm going to kind of glue a little bit of the lace together so it doesn't fall apart. Let's see, I'm going to do that by just poking a little bit of glue underneath this ribbon. It's woven in here. Okay, and then we're going to put it across our heart and it's wanting to stick to me. You definitely want to use a low temperature hot glue gun for this project. I say that every day. But here's why. This quilt batting stuff, when it um, comes in contact with hot glue, it sort of melts a little bit and it gets super hot. So I can just only imagine how bad you could burn yourself if you were using regular hot glue gun and quilt batting on a project. I wouldn't risk it. So I'm going to just glue this on here. I'll lift it up in just a second and show you. the spots. If you guys end up making any banners using quilt batting, um, you know, anything like this, I definitely want to see pictures. Okay, here's what we have right now. So it's just glued on there. And I am going to trim the lace off. And this is what it looks like, okay? And then, let me show you this step. I took, before I came up, I took this stencil and some of the um, canvas deck. Get this out of the way. And I basically made my own custom piece of fabric. I just used this on top of canvas duck with mango mojito ink, all right? And then I let it dry. So I had a whole piece. This is what I have left. And this is what I used to cut the hearts that I'll show you in a minute, and also to cut this little strip that says love, 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 that's going in the center. Okay, tell me um, what you guys think about this project so far and you know what I want to know also is what are your go-to colors mine are boring and safe <laughs> I seem to always go to cream gray or black um, and these kind of colors totally so tell me what yours are okay so I'm gonna take this is all dry 
I'm going to just take and cut a whole line of love, love, love off. And that is what we're going to put in the center of our lace. And I want it to look fairly decent and straight. Not all wobbly. Okay, so this is what I have. It's almost like a piece of ribbon now. And I'm just going to glue it right over the center of this. And we'll do it right at the spot where you can see love, love, love. You like um, you like natural colors, but for Valentine's Day, add red. Oh my gosh, you guys! For Christmas this last year, I totally went outside of my normal natural or black and white Christmas tree and Christmas decor theme, and I did red and cream, and it was so pretty. Oh, Joey says she's using some blush pink this year. Joey, I want to see pictures. Um, uh, Chris says blues, cream, black, grays, and tans. Penny says she loves green. I love green too. Fall colors. Let's see who said that. I don't know if I can. P. Gray Spemmy. Anyways, yeah, we all have our own style, and that's what I love about crafting, is you could you know, watch somebody like me do a project like this and totally understand what the basics are. And then you can recreate it in your colors, in your style, to go in your decor. Okay, so that's that. And now, what we're go aiming towards is this. And it, it has a little stuffing in it. So I want to look to see that I have them at about the same height. Oh, and it also has a little button at the very top. So let me see what I can find. They don't have to be exactly the same. That's adorable. Let's put that on here. cute okay so I started when I was gluing mine on um, to do the little point first tap that down carefully so you don't get glue on your hands alternatively you could use these are those little finger protector things and this is a I don't know what you call this, around. One of my followers made this for me last year because she kept seeing me get glue all over my fingers. So you could use something like this to, to tap it down to. And now I'm just gonna kind of go up the sides. Tap that down. A little bit further on that one. A little bit further here. And then we're using some of your just super basic polyfill. And you know what, what? I was using this the other day to make these. I'll show you these. These turned out so cute. These little door stuffies. That says XOXO y'all. And this one says XOXO y'all. And they're a little lumpy. And want somebody, I wish I could remember who it was, who was watching said, you know, Heidi, if you will tear your stuffing, 
you probably fill up a little bit before you put it in, then it'll do its thing a little better. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And sure enough, she's right. So this is what she meant. Instead of sticking a whole lump in it that then is hard to get smoothed out, tear it into little pieces before you do that. And then you can kind of push it into the nooks and crannies and get a nicer look. So there's your tip for the day. I learned so much. I learn as much from you guys as you do from me. Okay, so we're not going to super stuff these. I just want a little dimension to it. And I want it to be kind of about the same as the other one. Okay, so I just poked my stuffing in. And then what I found works the best to get this glued down is to put a little blob where the top V of your heart is first. So that's tacked down. And then I'm just going to put just a teeny bit of glue right here and push that down. I don't want to get the glue on the quilt batting and then on my fingers, and I definitely don't want to get it on the polyfill and then get it on my fingers. Cute, huh? Okay, so then the next one we're going to do is this one. And it started with this, and all I did was use my little pattern that we made from the wood cut out from Dollar Tree. And where is it? Oh, here it is. And this was the piece that I got. So I have all this left, and I cut out my little love hearts using my computer paper pattern, and I am going to look to see where I placed this, basically. And we're going to stuff it exactly the same, and then I'll show you how I made this little tool, wispy looking little tie at the top. bonder low temperature cool shot hot glue gun but it's low temperature and I feel like it's maybe even a little bit lower than a regular low temperature hot glue gun and I've been a crafter like my whole life and I've had 10 times too many hot glue burns that really hurt so I just don't even unless it's a project that specifically calls for hot, hot glue. I always use low temperature. My little drama queen Mia is standing at the door crying right now. She needs some attention. Okay, we're going to do the same thing. Turn our polyfill up. Why did I not know this trick? I don't know. Okay. It makes it easier for you to move it around too when you do that. It's about the same. You can do the same thing. Do a little um, glue down that little point in the center of the heart first.
All right. And then what I did with this, um, this looks like what you would make a wedding bell out of, kind of to me. I just, on one end of it, where was it? Oh, I chopped this section right here off, so we'll just continue. And it doesn't have to be straight or anything, because we're going to wad it all up. That's funny. It's hard to see. Yeah, this looks like an ivory veil to me. Okay, so I'm going to cut it in half. I'm not going to do that way because that is being too difficult. We'll tie a knot in the center first. This is two thicknesses. And I'm not going to tie it super tight because I want that, um, that pretty knot. And then I'm just going to cut the end off on both sides. Okay, and that is a little bit too big. And this is what you get. Isn't that pretty? And I'm just gonna attach it right here with some glue. And we're getting there. And I have another project to show you also. Okay, let me look and think. What am I missing? I don't think I'm missing anything. I think I have all the pieces ready to go. So let's figure out how we're going to assemble it to make a little room here. I'm going to start in the center of my rope from Dollar Tree. So this is the center. I think I'll just put a, a little pin in it so I know. And the center piece is going to be this one. All right. And I am just going to put a little bit of glue along this and then lay my thing on top of it and then I'll fold it over. So we'll come back and we'll do the folded over part for all of them at the same time. Okay, and then next to that on either side, wait, I didn't get it all far enough over, just realizing. Next to that, I think I decided that what I wanted was the little flag that looks like this. And I do want to kind of pay attention to how far apart I space them. So let's go for two inches apart. That should work. Hopefully this will be relatively straight, but it'll be hanging on my fireplace. So if it's not completely straight, it'll be bent in the center anyway, so that won't matter. Okay, that we're, the one that we're going to use now is this one. And it's sort of dry. I think I'm going to get my heat gun out for just a second. And give it just a little zap because I don't want to mess it up um, before I 
get my banner going. So I'm just going to give this a little blast. So sorry. As soon as I'm finished, I will um, go up to my chair and sit down and read what everyone has said. apart. So I'm going to be putting it on right there. If I would have made my flags a little bit longer, then I would have had a little bit more margin. Oops. So, what did we say? This was eight and a half inches long. You might want to make it nine or nine and a half if you're going to do this. Okay, and then next to this one, I think what I want to do, let's put this back here, two inches. Oops. Laying my ruler right here so I can see exactly where two inches. I think I want to do this one next. I just absolutely love this and I was really worried about using having to use mango mojito because my gold is gone so I need to reorder that um, these are both great colors okay and then next to this I am going to do the um, last flag which is this one me says Valentine's Day and says love and all that but it doesn't it doesn't hit you over the head you know with cupids and little arrows and not that that stuff is bad but um, this is a little more subtle look to Valentine's Day and love and it's in more subtle colors less traditional Valentine's Day colors than what you normally see. So I think this is gonna look great in my family room. Okay, and let's scooch this down and we'll add the other pieces on the other side. This one and have this one. Okay. And I have a zillion glue strings. <laughs> 
uh, which I'll just get my heat gun back out and use that and that will work great to kind of melt the glue strings. Okay, I want this one next at two inches. Yeah, if you do this project, definitely make your little flags longer. Because then you could almost even do it so that there's just a loop and the rope inside could slide, you know, and then you could space them out once you get them up on your, whatever you're hanging it on, however you like. Uh, hindsight is 2020, right? And then this is the last piece. I'm not sure that's kind of straight, sort of. Okay, so now let's just flip this puppy over and we'll add a little bit of glue to it. I'm not going to use a ton though. Um, enough to kind of tack that down. Whoops. It's turning out pretty cute. And I have this thing over here that I want to show you. So stay with me. That was another project that we did, um, which was awesome. I did not get that finished after I went live. I don't know why I didn't finish it, but um, I might finish it <laughs> this week because it was so pretty. And this thing that I'm going to show you is using the caramel colored ticking fabric that I love so much. And it's the um, loopy flowers on quilt batting flags. Okay, we're getting there. Gosh, I hope this is good. kind of short and I got glue on my fingers thank goodness it was low temperature it still hurt a little bit uh, Jean says one of her neighbors and his wife both have COVID I'm sorry I don't know what in the world is happening with everything I'm so tired of thinking about it. I am just trusting because I know that our Heavenly Father has not left. He hasn't left his throne and said, this is too hard, I just give up. He's still in control. He's still reigning and ruling. Um, he's still good. He still has a good plan for us. Uh, I just don't understand it and that's what makes it hard. But anyways, so this is our completed banner. Is that cute or what? I will, um, I might add some buttons or possibly a little more lace to it. I don't know. I'll play with it off camera and get that all finished up. And I'll get pictures of it on my mantle either tonight or first thing tomorrow morning. But let me show you this. This was another project that I did a while back and I used um, I used that tan or caramel colored ticking fabric from Walmart and this is the quilt batting and 
it's hung on a piece of, um, this is just that polished hemp stuff, and it has beads on it. And I really only have three flags that I need to finish. So I don't know why I didn't finish it, but anyways, this was also super cute. And um, these flowers are so much fun to make. I'll see if I can find this video and put a link to it in the comments. So, what you need are buttons, lace, quilt batting, cotton duck, low temperature hot glue, and then I used this stencil, love pattern stencil, and I also used the live, love, laugh, little one, and I used mango, mojito ink. Um, the, the pillows are uh, made with glittering gold and silver ink and stencils also for Magnolia DIY and then they have various buttons on them. So there you go. That's the project for today. Um, yes, Lynn, he is ruling and rain. He's raining and ruling. He's still in control. He still has a good plan for us. Uh, if you've placed your trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you know, ultimately, that everything will be okay because we know where we're headed. And we're going to go through difficult things in this life because we live in a fallen world. And this is not our final destination. This is just the, the little blip that we're traveling through in eternity. So if eternity is this long, which there's really no way to measure eternity, what we're on is just a little teeny little blip of that journey. And um, it's super easy to say, oh, don't worry. <laughs> but that's not realistic. Of course, if you have lost someone that you love or you yourself or somebody in your family, close friend is going through COVID right now, um, that is super hard, but our Heavenly Father is still in control, and COVID is not too hard for him. So, oh, Lisa's my hair looks pretty, thank you. I have lots of hairspray on. Um, Tracy says she would love to know about Mag more about Magnolia and company. Uh, Tracy, I will send you information about a Zoom meeting tonight that's called, uh, I can't think of what it's called, but it's about Magnolia. So I'd be glad, and I'll give you a link also. So if anyone wants links to any of the stencils, ink, um, pillow forms, or any of the squeegees, or any of that kind of stuff, um, just say link in the comments and I'll get those for you as soon as I hop off. Let's see, what is she saying? June says, your feeling is that God sends us tools. Some use them, some do not. Every friend we lost to COVID said that God would take care of them. Oh, I don't want to get into a whole vaccine or no vaccine uh, conversation because that's completely up to you and after you pray on it uh, and, and you feel confident in what answer God is telling you that's absolutely what you should do ask the Holy Spirit to tell you um, but it is just super sad and I'm super sick of it and I'm sure you are too so anyways not to bring our wonderful little projects to a downer ending um, Anyways, I hope you love all this stuff. If you do something like this, I definitely want to see pictures. And I set up that crafting group here on Facebook. It's free. It's called Dreamy DIY. Um, as a place for us to all share pictures of our crafts so that we can get a ton of ideas from each other. So if you haven't joined that yet, just type Dreamy, D-R-E-A-M-Y, and then there's a space, DIY, in the search bar on Facebook, and it'll bring you to that group. Answer this week three questions. 
um, and we'll say, come on in, um, and then click on the photo button and just start looking because there's thousands of pictures of amazing projects there and I would like you to share yours there too. So, all right, I have definitely talked long enough and I want to sit down now and read all of your comments. Okay, one more question. Lynn Hollis Ingram says, is this chalk paste? No, this is ink but I don't want to confuse anyone, but on a banner kind of a project, it's fabric, and typically for fabric, you use ink. Ink has the white lids. That's typically what you do, but when you're making a banner, something that's not going to get handled much and not ever going to be needing to be put in a washing machine, then you can sometimes get away with using chalk paste. Don't ever use chalk paste on a pillow especially if you have a white sofa. Uh, you want to use ink because suppose somebody comes over and sits down on your couch and leans back on your pillow and their jacket's a little bit damp. If you have chalk paste on a pillow, it's going to smear all over. It could get on your sofa. It could get back on, on the back of their clothes. Um, so, and you wouldn't be able to wash it. So for something like pillows, tea towels, t-shirts, totes, that kind of thing, you have to use ink. For, um, for banners, you can sometimes get away with chalk paste. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining me. If you liked this video, feel free to sprinkle it to your social media. I'd love that. Thank you so much to everybody who did stars well. You are so generous. I really appreciate that. Um, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Do a this or a this or um, say something to me in the comments if you want to have a fighting chance <laughs> that the Facebook algorithm gods will show you what crafts I have going on tomorrow. It's completely crazy. I can't figure it out. But those things, doing a this, this, or saying something in the comments, and then liking and following this page, those seem to improve your chances. You can always come back here anytime you want by just typing in DIY Dreaming on Facebook and it'll bring you to this page. You can click the videos tab and go back through and watch videos all the way back to almost four years ago when I started doing Facebook Live videos. Um, and they're all labeled, so you'll know what you're going to look at. So anyways, there you go. There's your Facebook lesson. Have a blessed rest of your day. Um, I can't wait to sit down now and see what you guys have to say. And I will see you tomorrow for sure. I'll get pictures of everything either tonight or possibly tomorrow because it's starting to get dark and I want the pictures to be bright and pretty. Um, anyway, so look for pictures here and at, at um, DIY Dreaming and I will see you guys later. Bye.